Yo guys, Tanmay here for Simple Snippets, back with another video tutorial on C++ programming. In this video tutorial, we'll be looking into the topic of structure arrays and pointer to structures. Now this is sort of like a part 2 to the first video that was on structures and concept of structures. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll drop a link and you can also see a card on the top right corner. So the reason why I'm making this video is because of two reasons. And the first one being that I got a request from subscribers and users as to when are you going to upload the part 2 of structures which had that array of structures concept and also because a lot of people wanted to know more about pointers and some programs revolving around pointers. So this video tutorial is going to be totally practical and it would cover both these topics and if you don't know what pointers are I'll also drop a link in the description and you can see a card on the top right corner wherein we've talked about the theoretical aspect of pointers and introduction to pointers and we also saw a Program. So check the two videos if you haven't seen that is on structures and pointers and they are in the same playlist and before we get started make sure you subscribe to this channel because there are a lot of videos on object oriented programming coming soon. So with that being said let's get started. So quickly open up your DC++ IDE because we are directly jumping into the practical aspect. So let me just read out the question that is program 1 that we are going to do. We are going to create an array of structures and accept input and display output. So the structure name is going to be person. So data members are going to be name, age and salary. Same like the one that we did in the part one of structures so I've just typed out the basic template and you can see I have included one more header file that is string header file so this will help us include a class in our object which we can use so I'll tell you what that is so let's get started and we'll first start off creating a structure to want to create a structure we have to type out the keyword struct and we have to create that structure outside the main function so you can see I'm typing it above I'll say person and opening and closing braces with semicolon at the end and we have to create three data members so I'll say string name int age and double salary now notice that this string did not get bold or highlighted like these two primitive data types now these two are predefined in primitive data types however this is a class so this is a custom data type you can say and it is coming from this header file so in the part one of this video tutorial that is the introduction to structures we had to create an array so we created a char array with some size predefined size and there was one drawback to this is because what if the name exceeds a certain limit now in arrays we have to predefine the size right so we cannot give smaller size and expect a large character length string to fit into it so for example if I give your 10 and the name is like 12 to 15 characters long it will truncate the part after 10 size right so this was one drawback and also taking input is a cumbersome task because we have to use that clear and all so instead of using this we are going to use the class string so this will make things easy so our basic structure is ready now let's jump to the main function in the main function in the part one of this video we created one variable p1 and we can create multiple variables of this structure type so I can say p1 p2 p3 but what if we want to create like 100 different variables so I'll have to create those variables p3 p4 p5 until p100 so instead of that I can create an array of size 100 so I can say person p and just as we create integer array or character array or the basic data type based arrays we can create an array of structure just with the same syntax I'll say person p and inside this I'll say 10. So what is going to happen is it is going to create an array of this structure data type and each each of the element of the arrays for example p of 0 then p of 1 p of 2 till p of 9 will have their own individual set of these three data members so p of 0 will have name age and salary p of 1 will have its own name age and salary and so we have an array which can have which can store 10 different names 10 different age values and 10 different salaries so let's go ahead and take input so for convenience we'll just create an array of size 2 then let's take input from user we'll say see out enter person details like name age and salary then let's take these values from user and since it is an array we can use a for loop to iterate to the each individual array member so I'll say for int i is equal to 0 i less than 2 i plus plus now I'll say c in I'll say p of i dot name so first I'll take name then I'll take age and lastly I'll take salary 
and notice that to take input of the first variable stored at the first array location that is going to be 0 I use that iterator i which is going to iterate inside this for loop so at 0th position I take the name age and salary then it would be i plus plus that would be i of 1 so then for that value I'll take name age and salary individually so now let's see how this works we'll first print out these values so I'll say details of users now to again print I use one more for loop I will say int i is equal to 0 i less than 2 and i plus plus so I will see details of person i which would print the number I will say i plus 1 because we want to display a number 1 and since i starts from 0 so we need to add one value then I will say see out name colon p of i of dot name just copy and paste this three times I will say age and salary just make those changes over here age name and salary and let's see if this program works so just save it go to execute and say compile and run ok so it ran in the first go which means we've written the code correctly and it's asking enter person details so we have to enter two people's details so I'll just write down the details starting from name I'll say Tanmay age 24 and salary as 45,000 then it is asking details of person 2 so I'll say Sachin age 20 salary 10,000 so there you go you can see the output as well details of user details of person 1 name age salary again detail of person 2 so this means that our program worked successfully so here I could have printed one more message to be more intuitive enter details of person and then it would print enter details of person 1 it will take details of person 1 then it will again print enter details of person 2 so that seems more intuitive so yeah this was basically array of structures program and the reason why we create array of structures is when we have to create a lot of variables and you don't want to create individual variables because then again taking input for these individual variables also will become hectic now you can see to take individual details of variables you'll have to say p1 dot then p2 dot and separately you have to create a lot of line of code but if you have 100 variables or one array of this structured data type having 100, 100 variables so if an array is created of size 100, even then only these four lines of code would be required to take an input. You just have to change the i value over here, i less than 100 and it will iterate 100 times. But if you create individual 100 variables, p1, p2 till p100, you have to write 100 lines of code to take or 100 into 3 line of code to take 3 data member values for each variable. So that would be 300 lines of code which is which becomes very hectic. So at that times array of structures come into picture and they save a lot of line of code and it, it becomes very easy. So now let's move on to the next topic which is pointer to structures. So let me just first copy this entire code and I'll create a new one, create new source file. I'll just paste this and just clear the part inside the int main because we want the structure to be same. So we'll keep the same structure and what we are going to do is, there's going to be program2 and here we'll create a variable of struct type create a pointer and point to it and use the pointer take and dis take input and display output okay so let's see this program we already have created our structure which you can see over here now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create one variable of person type so person p1 i'll say see out enter details of person as name age and salary I'll take these values so I'll say p1 dot name copy and paste this two times Let's say p1 dot age and p2 dot salary okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to again print this so details of person are as follows I'll say see out name I'll say p1 dot name then we have age and salary I'll say age salary now let's save this as pointer to 
structure dot cpp let's try to compile and execute this now i haven't created any pointer yet but let's see if this runs first so it's giving an error over here okay i just missed out an extraction operator sign so i made a typo over here you can see that in all this code just save this go to compile and run and it should run properly so there you go you got the output so it's asking for entry details of person i'll say tanmay age 24 salary 10,000 and there you go it printed the values as well now what we are going to do is we are going to create a pointer and we are going to point it to this p1 structure variable and we'll use that pointer to print the same message so in order to create a pointer we just type in the data type of the pointer and in this case the data type of the pointer is going to be person itself so person star ptr so we already know how to create pointers so if you don't know how to create pointers or some basic theory about pointers i would again recommend you to go watch the video that i've suggested and you can see that in the cards and also in the description and in the, it is in this video playlist itself so we have to create a pointer with the data type that we've created as a structure so i'll say person star ptr and i'll point it that is i'll pass the address of p1 to it so p1 is our variable which is a structure variable that we've created of person type so since the pointer is also of person type it can point to p1 because p1 is also of person type now what we are going to do is again we have to go, going to print the same details so just copy and paste this over here but in this case we are not going to use p1 so we are going to use ptr so with ptr you cannot use dot operator because it is a pointer you have to use that arrow operator and you can see in the intellisense it pops up three options because it is a pointer and it will directly give us options so i'll say name again change this dot to the arrow operator i'll print age and here again arrow operator and salary so what i'll do is i'll comment this part out and we're just going to use a pointer so we'll take the values using normal p1 ob object or p1 variable in fact we can even take the values using the pointer so what i'll do is just copy this and paste it over here and let me just comment this out i'll say ptr arrow operator name similarly just replace this and this so what we are going to do is we created the person p1 variable we asked the user to enter details we created a pointer first we pointed it to p1 and we are using the pointer to take input as well as we are using the pointer to display the output so let's just save this and let's try to execute this i'll say compile and run okay i forgot to replace this p1 as ptr so let me just replace it over here and here save this execute compile and run and i think it should run fine okay so there you go it ran successfully which means that it, have, it is working it's asking for the values let's just enter values i'll say 10 24 20 000, and it should print out these values so there you go you can see details of person are as follows name age and salary and this is all using pointers so we took input using the pointer and we also printed out using the pointer itself so pointers are essentially used when there are multiple variables and you want to use a single pointer to point to these multiple variables depending upon which variable comes into picture so if you have like p1 p2 p3 and n number of person variables or person structure objects then in that case you can create one pointer and make it point to p1 p2 and p3 at different stages of the program and use the same pointer to print or take input so this was for p1 i can just say ptr is equal to and p2 and now i can take input for p2 because this pointer that we've created over here which was pointing p1 will now start pointing to p2 and since p2 is also a person type it is compatible with this pointer and using the same pointer we can take data for p2 so this was how we can use pointers to point to structures okay so that's it for this video guys i hope you understood both the programs the first program was array of structures where we created a structure type array and i also told you how to use it and when it is needed and the second program we saw how to use pointers to point to structures and we also saw that program so if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and make sure you subscribe to this channel peace